Hello and welcome to Data Driven, the podcast where we explore the emerging field of data science. We bring the best minds in data, software engineering, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Now here are your hosts, Frank Lavinia and Andy Leonard. Hello and welcome back to Data Driven, the podcast where we explore the emerging fields of data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence. If you like to think of data as the new oil, then you can consider us car talk because we focus on where the rubber meets the road. And on with me on this epic road trip down the information superhighway, as he has been from day one, <laughs> season one, episode one, episode zero, actually, we started at zero. I think you're right. Uh, with me is Andy Leonard, who has gone from data engineer to chief data engineer to you had another really data philosopher. That's what it was. Yeah, I started with data philosopher back in the day. Right. Which is very cool, yeah. by the way. Well, you know, I appreciate that, Frank. It kind of went with the beard. And, you know, back then I had the unbraided version of the beard. <laughs> and so you never I still call it. myself. Sorry, go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I still call myself a data philosopher at uh, DILM Suite, which is kind of like an offshoot of of Edna, the ah, consulting company. Cool. So, yeah, I kept the title. Awesome. <laughs> Enterprise DNA, for those uh, not in the know, not Edna, like Dame Edna. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Not the insurance company, but Enterprise Data and Analytics. And, yep, we uh, I, I work there. Frank works at Microsoft. Yep, which wasn't yeah. the case during the, the whole podcast uh, journey, actually. Um, uh, I had been riffed from Microsoft because they basically said move to Seattle or else. And um, I uh, rejoined um, about 18 months ago. Awesome. Has it been that long? Wow. It really has. Yeah. I mean, um, well, April. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, still, okay, fifteen months. Fifteen months. Yeah. It was eighteen months <laughs> so, since the, the the job opportunity was like first presented to me. Right. Um, right. So it's been an interesting it's been an interesting journey. I'm now uh, they changed our titles for this upcoming fiscal year. Uh, Microsoft fiscal year goes from July first to June thirtieth. Uh, I am now a cloud solution architect. Congratulations. Thank you. I um, I, I like that title better. Because it's easier to explain at parties. <laughs> like cloud solution architect. Oh, okay. It's cloud. It's architect. Yeah. Perfect. Where before I was a technology solutions professional, which requires a bit of a follow up sentence or two. Well, it's vague. Yeah, it is vague. Yeah. So it's nice to have something that is. Um, yeah, it's funny because throughout my, my tenure at Microsoft, I've always had those kind of weird, hard to explain titles like evangelist. Yes. Right, you're right. Which, right. You know, p- 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 folks like you and me, and uh, yeah, I, I, I gather ninety nine percent of our listeners, um, we get we know what an evangelist is. Right, um, right. But to normal people, they don't necessarily they're like what, like a televangelist. Right, like like religious. Yeah, religious. Right, right, right. It's not yes. quite like that. So. <laughs> well, you weren't. But... Although some would argue, maybe it is. <laughs> Well, I, I know you've always had a passion for community. Um, for those who don't know that, I don't know that we've ever told the backstory, Frank. Um, What's the backstory? You and I, when we first met, it was yes. it was November of 2005. I, yes. I know that. And I remember that because the .NET, Richmond.NET users group was just getting going or getting re-going. I'm not sure. Uh, we would kind of... Uh... So when I moved to Richmond uh, from New Jersey, I had um, wanted to restart the group. Yeah. And um, by the time November happened, we had a pretty good momentum going on. And I think you were there uh, when we were at uh, our temporary location. And we ended up taking up two conference rooms, which was about twice the size of the group that we expected. Wow. Yeah. And I was talking about starting up a Richmond SQL group. And um, Andrew Duthie. Um, who was the developer evangelist for the area at the time, suggested I meet you. Very cool. So, and I think I told you, like, yeah, just send them on by. You know, I'll be here. So, And he did, and I uh, I popped in, 
and gosh, who was, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. It was me. I think it was from New Jersey. I want to say Miguel Castro. It was Miguel. Yes. Yep. You had him come down. Yeah, that was a fantastic presentation. I had no idea uh, who he was at the time. Um, but He's an awesome presenter. He really um, is, and a very smart guy. Um, very impressive, just, just all around. And we also, um, I distinctly remember meeting Nick Harris at that meeting as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, so we very were cool. all just, we were all kind of newish to the Richmond area. I was born in Richmond. But I had lived in Jacksonville, Florida for the previous three and a half years. And I was I'd gotten into community down there. I really didn't, you know, know much about the, the technical community, although I lived in the area, uh, you know, in the Richmond metropolitan area, uh, you know, before I moved down to Florida. But it was it was very interesting. And, you know, I kind of caught the bug. And I think you and I were both at a spot in our lives where we had a little bit of extra time and we were both very passionate about this whole idea of community. So we dove in. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And it's funny you mentioned Miguel because Miguel uh, and Don Demsack, I think at the time he was known as Don XML, uh, mm-hmm. were the guys that got me interested in, in, in community when I lived in New Jersey. Cool. I that went, is so cool. So, you know, which actually I think leads us to kind of our next topic, one of our themes, if you will, for the year. Because now that we're three seasons in, two, what, two and a half yeah. years, maybe? Yeah, yeah. And uh, this season was a bit delayed, um, but it's not been delayed as long as a Rick and Morty season. So <laughs> count your blessings. Um, <laughs> <laughs> setting that bar low. Um, <laughs> I love Rick and Morty, so you know, much love to Harmon and I forget the other guy's name, but <laughs> um, anyway, um, so so one of the themes I think we want to we, we want to kick off on is two themes. One is inspiration, like what inspired us, like you know what right what inspired us to get into data. What can we do to inspire others? You know, to kind of pay it forward, you know, like what inspired us to get into this? What inspired us to stay in this? And how can we pass that on to our listeners? I think that's really, I think that's what gets us up in a day and keeps us up late at night. And um, absolutely. And and then the other side of that, the other topic that I think bleeds into it is uh, and, and kind of takes into account our profession is tech intensity. Right. Right. And tech intensity is one of those uh, newfangled terms that uh, if you watch the uh, Inspire keynote last week, and internally we've been using that a lot, tech intensity, which is basically helping sh- helping spread the knowledge of technology to more people. Like basically turning up our technology skills, just uh, turning it up a notch, as well as sharing that knowledge. Yeah, you know, and it's kind of like what you did when you were an evangelist, Frank. And I think both you and I have have been classified as technology evangelists at different points in our career by different people. But the idea is we're excited about uh, technology. We, we like what we're seeing. Uh, maybe we have passions that go in the other direction emotionally. Maybe we don't like these other things that we're seeing. But whatever it is that that we're passionate about positively or negatively. We share that. Exactly. Uh, we just, did. exactly. Yeah. And it's kind of like a, a correlation uh, measurement, right? Like if it's the closer it is to zero, yeah. there's no correlation, but the closer it is to negative one or positive <laughs> one, um, there's either a negative correlation or a positive correlation. How's that for geeking out? I, I like that. <laughs> That's got data science written all it does, over it. Doesn't it? It's almost like it's a podcast <laughs> about data science. Um, <laughs> We should do one. We should do one. Um, So I think really the key here is, and and what's really cool is, you know, over the past, um, over the past six months, we both have had challenges, you know, in terms of deaths in the family. My wife was hospitalized. She's okay now. Uh, That's really what kind of has delayed the season from coming out. Um, But uh, also as part of that, I've, I've I've managed to, as part of my, my job is, is go and, um, go through and actually have people come up to me when I'm, you know, presenting at a customer site, like, Oh yeah, I love your show. You know, like tell Andy, I said, hi. And yep. 
You know, it's yeah. like, yeah, that happens to me. When it's I cool. It's like, yeah. wow, it's like, awesome. you know, it's not just my mom listening, you know, and it's not just like <laughs> AI bots that I program. No, I don't actually have that, but, but <laughs> like, it's, it's actually something like people are listening to. And we appreciate that. We really appreciate that. That is so true. Well, and I, I'll just, I, I'll say, because now I know, Frank, you set all of this up, so I'm not stealing anybody's thunder here. Frank did all the work. Once again, Frank did all the work. But we have, uh, for season three, for this kickoff, we have a, a really cool guest. All of our guests have been cool. I've said this before. They're awesome. But this guest is a little higher visibility in some circles that, Maybe not not our other guests have been as high visibility in. And that's that's the big tease I'm going to do, awesome. Frank. I'm going to let you uh, take so it from in, there. So in light of this inspiration uh, theme, uh, I want to share with, with, with you all, with our listeners, the guy who inspired me to podcast. Uh, his name is John Lee Dumas. He runs a podcast called Entrepreneur on Fire. Uh, it's an award-winning podcast where he interviews inspiring entrepreneurs who are and his words on fire. And he has over 2000 episodes. If anyone posts more content on the internet than me, it's probably him. <laughs> um, 1 million plus listeners a month, seven figures from his podcast of annual revenue. Wow. Uh, he's known to his, his fans as just JLD. Um, and he's just getting started. He's, he's doing a lot of great stuff. He's actually been in two movies, documentaries, not like Avengers or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> But that is two more documentaries than I've been in. So, you know, much props to him. And um, he's been a continual source of inspiration. Uh, you can, um, I better shut off my Alexa because as soon as I start talking about her, she will start playing it. But if you, he actually has a flash briefing on uh, Amazon Alexa. So if you uh, want to do it, you can just ask her to, to, to play, you know, Entrepreneur on Fire. Right. He is a genius. He is a veteran. Uh, he served our country in Iraq. Uh, he is awesome because he he's just very inspirational. He has a, a, a program called Podcasters Paradise, which, you know, we've kind of talked about uh, a lot in terms of the training that I did. We always mentioned the training that Frank did. Absolutely. Um, to kind of help get the podcast going. Yeah, this guy sounds pretty cool. Who are we talking about? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's some guy named... John Lee Dumas, although Alexa, Alexa always puts on like a little bit of a French twist on it, like John Lee Dumas. <laughs> that is the roots. That's where uh, the, that is the root? fam comes from. Wow. Also, another French Canadian on the call. <laughs> yes. Danger, 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 Andy. <laughs> I'm outnumbered. <laughs> it's all good. Though. Awesome. It's all good. Welcome, Mr. Dumas. Thank you for inviting me. I'm looking forward to hanging out with you two for a little while. So uh, welcome to the show. Uh, for those that don't know, he um, we just mentioned that you were in two, two documentaries, uh, one of which I just got the email about today. Did you want to talk about that? Age of the Entrepreneur. It was a documentary that features 24 pretty successful entrepreneurs. And I mean, this team put in the work. I mean, they actually flew down to Puerto Rico with a full team, with a full video crew. We recorded all day. I mean, it was a definite production. It was a couple of years ago, the filming. I mean, this takes a long time for these higher production movies to kind of obviously make the progress from conception to reality. And it was really cool to see it come out and to sit down and to watch it and to see people like Les Brown, Russell Brunson, T. Harv Eker, Jenna Kucher, and just a ton of other successful entrepreneurs uh, be a part of it. And I think it's really going to uh, move the needle for some people. Awesome. I, I was ex excited uh, just watching the trailer. Um Cool. Well, I can drop a quick link for people because awesome. it's still free to watch. It won't be forever, but eofire.com slash video. You can go watch the whole movie for free. Awesome. And we'll be sure to put that in the show notes. And the uh, next item was you were also, I think it was the Think and Grow Rich documentary. Yes, that also was a super highly produced movie. That was actually the highest produced I've ever been. I mean, they brought in real characters, real scenes were shot. You know, they would go back in time and 
I mean, that was some cinematography at its I was heights. impressed. And I, I just remember I was watching it because I think it was on like Amazon Prime or something like that. And I'm watching it and I'm like, and you show up. I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> like, holy crap. <laughs> I, I, I kind of know that guy, sort of. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. We've listened so, to you. So uh, one of the things that I think really <laughs> you, you inspired was you, you, you kind of, you, you talked you talk a lot about this in, in, in a number of places about what got you into podcasting. Did you want to share kind of a, a two minute version of that? Well, what got me into podcasting, honestly, in a sense, was the book Think and Grow Rich. So that was why it was very fitting to be part of that movie because I can remember so clearly being a little a little lost, like in my late twenties, you know, having been an officer in the US Army and being very proud of that and that being a very solid part of my life. But then after that, struggling and finding my footing with law school and corporate finance and commercial real estate. And I remember just literally going to Google and typing in best business books of all time. And right near the top of the list, if, if not at the top of the list, was Think and Grow Rich. And so I ordered that one and a handful of other ones. And I mean, this is way pre Kindle. So I mean, like I literally ordered the physical books, they show up and I just remember reading them. And then the book, They Can Grow Rich really stuck with me because of the concept of masterminds, which I'd never really heard of before. And just, just the struggles that Napoleon Hill went through interviewing all of these people, but the inspiration and knowledge that came from those interviews and all of that stuff was just really cool and really inspiring to me. And that book was kind of a domino that like, it's like, man, these books are actually kind of cool. So I then read another one and another one and another one. And then I'm like, ah, you know, I'm actually in the car a lot. Why am I listening to Miley Cyrus every third song on the radio? How about I actually turn my car into Automobile University, which I did. And so now I'm buying audio books, but you know, I'm not rich at this point in my life. So I was like, hmm, I wonder if there's a cheaper way instead of paying $17 for every audio book. And that's what led me to learn about podcasting and just fall in love with the medium of podcasting, free, on-demand, targeted content. And I was just like, I get it. How is this not more of a thing? Like, why are so many people wasting this incredibly valuable time that they're at the gym listening to, you know, achy, breaky heart for the 50th time? Like, why not actually be learning some inspirational, motivational, tactical stuff while you're at the gym, in your car, walking your dog, folding your laundry, washing your dishes? It just made so much sense to me. It was almost just like, the king with no clothes or whatever that fable was. I was like, how are, how is not everybody seeing this right, right now? I don't get it. It's like literally this king is naked right now. Cause to me, the opportunity was just so obvious. <laughs> and I said, I got to get into this. And that's when I'm like, what is needed? Because I'm not going to just launch a podcast like everybody else, because I'm not going to be good at podcasting. So I need a tactical edge. I said, well, how do you get good at something? Oh, you actually do the thing. And that's when I was like, I got to do it every single day. Everybody's like, no, 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 no. That's not how podcasting's done. You'll get burned out. Nobody will listen to it daily. I'm like, I don't care if nobody listens to it daily. I need to do it daily if I'm going to ever get good at this thing. I'm not going to get good at something I do once a week. And so that's when the daily podcast was launched back in 2012. And now you and I are chatting or the three of us are chatting, uh, seven years later, 2,200 episodes later, $16 million in revenue later. Wow. And uh, it was a pretty good aha wow. moment. So talk about inspiring. Sorry, Andy, I cut you off. Well, really, that, no, that's okay. I wanted to thank you for your service. Um, I, I appreciate that. I'm a, um, I was in the Virginia Army National Guard for six years. Nothing like uh, what you did. But thank you. Well, I appreciate the appreciation. And I'm a big believer that we're all a cog on the bigger team. So I think anybody who serves deserves a lot of credit. Same here. I, I can't tell you how uh, how inspiring uh, the shows that I've listened to. I haven't listened to all 2,200 of them. What? I'm out of here. <laughs> but I'm going to get right on that. I'm gonna, I am. I'm going to get right on it uh, just as soon as we get done. But one of the things that struck me early on when I first found um, eofire.com was the posting of the revenue. So you've got in the corner of the site, I've got it up right now, 
and you've got the June 2019 income. We're recording this just uh, July 22nd, 2019. And here you've got a report on your income and two things. One is the transparency. And I think the bigger piece is that you're obviously practicing what you preach and there's a number to prove it. Absolutely. And honestly, that goes back to like 2011, 2012, when I was trying to come up with an idea, like what can I do in the online world that's going to give me location freedom, lifestyle freedom, and hopefully financial freedom. And I wasn't really sold on it. You know, I was an army officer for eight years. I was really big into that. And then I was, you know, thinking about law school, which I went to and dropped out after um, um, a semester and then corporate finance, commercial real estate. I was like very traditional in my path just because my eyes hadn't been open. I hadn't been um, really exposed to really successful entrepreneurs that were living these amazing lives. And I kind of had this wrong feeling, but it was a feeling that, you know, if you were going to make money online, you were kind of slimy, you were kind of scammy just because I didn't know any better. I was clueless. And right. I stumbled across this guy, Pat Flynn, smartpassiveincome.com. And he had been publishing an income report for a couple of years at that point. And I remember thinking to myself, you know what, if I ever find my thing and start making money, I am going to be as transparent and authentic as this guy. Cause here's a guy who's a good guy, family dude, you know, making really good money. You know, he's making like 20 or 30 K a month at that point, which to me was wow. like to, to the moon and back. And, and it is, I mean, there's a ton of money. Oh, yeah. And I was just like, whew, this guy's proving to me that you can do it the right yeah. way. And that was what I was all about, you know, coming from the credo of being an officer in the U.S. Army, serving during a time of war, you know, 13-month tour of duty in Iraq. I mean, I wow. wanted to do it the right way. And he showed me it was possible. And so when I hit my first $100,000 month, I said, you know what? It's time um, to start being really transparent to show people how we're making our money, the successes we're having so they can be emulated, the failures we're having so they can be avoided. And let's bring my CPA on, my accountant to first off, you know, validate what we're doing because anybody can just write anything on the internet. So let's bring on somebody who, you know, is a professional and, and has a, a legal obligation, you know, to, to validate this and to, to make it to, uh, to show that this is reality. And then also let's bring on my lawyer because uh, I have a lawyer as well and my accountant can give a tax tip. My lawyer can, can give a legal tip and just give a lot more credibility to this whole thing so people know that this is coming from a place of transparency, authenticity, and genuineness. And so that was 71 months ago and we haven't missed a month since. Wow. And I think wow. another thing that I'm um, glad you mentioned the financial reports because um, one of the things that... Um, I was impressed with, and I think I asked you this last week when we did kind of another call kind of sort of related to this, was how do, since our show is about data and analytics, and you are the entrepreneur's entrepreneur, um, how how impactful are analytics and data to someone in your position? It's everything. Um, it's, I'll butcher it just a little bit, but there's a Peter Drucker quote, which essentially is, you know, what gets measured gets improved. And like, if you're not measuring things, you're not going to improve those things. If you're not studying your analytics, if you're not studying the ROI, the return on investment for what you're doing, if you're not looking at the numbers and tweaking and optimizing and testing and all of that, like you're not going to be running as successful of a business as you could be, period, end of story. And so that's why I wanted to be super accountable and know my numbers and know where the money was coming in, where the money was going out, any leaky holes in the ship, where to patch them, um, which things were really working, by the way. Let's amplify those things. A lot of people don't even know like what's really working best in their business because they don't know their numbers. I know my numbers inside and out because we do a full income report every single month. And if you're not doing that at least privately, there's no reason you have to be public about these numbers. We're not doing them privately you know, you're, you're leaving a lot on the table and you're potentially setting yourself, yourself up for failure. That is well said. And I think there's a lot of folks who are CXOs of companies that, you know, I interact with as part of my day job that just don't quite get it, how important data is. And it's not just a nerd thing. It's a business thing. So, uh, JLD, um, wh where can people find out more about what you're doing and, and, and stuff like that? All the magic for us happens at 
eofire.com. You go there, you'll be able to see those income reports that you mentioned earlier. You know, we have 71 of those that are just full of all the things that are working for us. I mean, you know, podcasting is big for us, but we do a lot of things besides podcasting. We have courses, we have physical products, we have affiliate revenue. So we do a lot of different things. So no matter where where you are in your journey or what industry you're in, you can learn a lot from those income reports. It's also a place where we have a ton of free courses on how to start a podcast, how to create a funnel, how to create your own mastermind. They're all free. They're super well done, very valuable. Go check out those free courses at eofire.com. And of course, I'd love for anybody that doesn't already to check out and listen to my podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire. And it truly is on fire. Thank you, JLD. We know you have a limited uh, time frame here. So I want to thank you for being on the show and um, catch you on the flip side. Isn't that what you say at the end of your show? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thanks for listening and thanks for having me on. Anytime, man. All right. So that was awesome. We, we really appreciate JLD for taking time out of his busy schedule. We did have a very limited man, uh, sort of window of his time. So yep. it also, I don't think, made sense to ask him our usual round of questions. No, not, not yet. <laughs> but I was, I was glad we were able to kind of pull it back and, and talk about analytics and things like oh, that. I mean, sure. there are there are C-level folks that just don't think that they I've met with in the last – year or so that just like, yeah, data is not really part of our business plan. And I'm thinking. Uh, oh, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's either part of your business plan or it's you're part of your going out of business plan. I mean, that's how, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, pretty much how it, how it goes. I mean, if you look at, um, you know, one of the interesting things that JLD did bring up was that think and grow rich book. And I, 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 I have to confess, I, I have listened to, I have read some of it. I haven't read it all. I probably should um, because I actually have it on audio, on Audible too. Oh, cool. Um, I had the like 21 CD on a bridge version, but I lost all the, some of the CDs and stuff, you know. Oh, bummer. Yeah, that's why I love Audible because it's hard to lose that. Very you know? difficult. Yes, sir. I'm sure it's possible. I'm sure I'll figure it out. <laughs> but um, if you apply yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> See, Sorry, inspiration ahead. right there. If there you apply go. yourself, anything's possible. That's true. But um, yeah, so that book keeps coming up again and again. I think um, there there was an interview I think with Aerosmith, and when they kind of were all just starting, kind of they basically the whole world kind of collapsed because of all the drugs and rock and roll. Oh yeah. They yeah. somehow I think it might have been Steven Tyler got a hold of a book copy of that and got one for all the band and they, they kind of re rebuilt their careers. Really? I did not know that. Yeah. And me I know someone's gonna say, Well they didn't really rebuild their careers, but I mean got their lives together. Well yeah, know. yeah. Okay. So with that we do have a big announcement. And I What's the big announcement? We Frank? are hosting a data summit. So hearkening back to our early days from uh, about uh, wow, 13 years ago, when you and I uh, kind of uh, spearheaded the uh, uh, push to have a code camp in Richmond, um, we yep. are going to spearhead kind of a new movement towards basically making these types of events accessible to anyone in the world, really. Uh, we're going to have a virtual mm -hmm. summit, and we are calling it Data Soup virtual summit. So if you go to datasoupsummit.com, uh, uh, you'll be able to go and uh, see uh, the wonderful speakers we have lined up. And you're probably thinking like, hey, why are you calling it data soup? Especially uh, having something called soup when it's hotter than Hades on the East Coast for sure. And <laughs> summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, well, part of that is, is that the old expression, soup to nuts, right? Because a lot of the demos that we see um, uh, a lot of demos that we see kind of at these conferences, stuff like that, they, they, they are kind of idealized concepts, right? Like, you know, they don't really show you how to do something mm -hmm. soup to nuts, right? So for this one, which we, we, we hope to have kind of, this is first in a series um, of uh, events. Uh, I let that cat out of the bag. Um, but why not? You're our loyal listeners. Um, is that this one is going to be That's focused true. on kind of like, Data integration, data engineering, data science, AI, visualization, soup to nuts, right? The entire data science process. 
uh, from getting data, loading data, doing something with the data, um, you know, building a model, and even building out something Power BI. Yeah, it's going to be so cool because to the people we've got lined up. Can we talk some about the people? Okay. Yeah, I mean, definitely the ones who <laughs> filled out their profile on the site, which hopefully will be everyone by the time this launches. Uh, but um, Andy and I will be speaking. We'll kind of be more like the MCs. We're not really right. going to be stars of the show. Um, uh, but we do have, speaking of making it accessible, why don't you talk to us about someone who's really good at Power oh, BI? Wow. So Razor Rad. And if you don't know who Razor Rad is, I'm going to guess that you don't, uh, you don't search for answers on forums or at your favorite search engine for uh, Power BI. He's going to be, his answers are going to be in the top. Uh, Razor wrote, literally wrote the book on Power BI architecture that was released earlier this year. And he's one of the best known names. He, he lives in New Zealand. And what's nice about uh, the way Frank came up with the idea to structure this conference is we're actually having them record very close to the conference their sessions. And that gives them an opportunity to edit and make it just as tight as they possibly can and not have to pay that, you know, a few thousand dollars to fly here and back to New Zealand. <laughs> so, um, right. And, uh, you know, that's that's kind of the key is that I think a lot of this is about accessibility oh, in terms sure. of, you know, you, it, it, you get all the benefits of a conference. Because uh, Andy and I have been talking about doing live events since the Richmond Code Camp. Days. Yes. Um, you know, for pay live events, for, you know, for the since the Richmond Code Camp days. But for, for one reason or the other, it, we just it's one of those things we have to devote a lot of time to. Right. Uh, whereas with the virtual summit, we can just do what we're really good at, you know, lining up talent, lining up guests and kind of even some video magic and things like that, um, which if you've been watching my LinkedIn feed, it's been on fire lately, um, mostly promoting season three. And you can bet there's going to be some soup related stuff coming down the pike soon. Um, but really, the key here is, is, is that no matter where you are in the world, you'll be able to join. Right. And uh, we do have a base. Uh, it is for pay. It's twenty four ninety seven, I think, is what we set yep. as our price. Yep. yep. Uh, but for data driven listeners, if you use the coupon code data driven, we will give. What do you think, Andy? What do you think the discount should be for data driven? Oh, gosh, Frank, I'd, I'd say, you you know, these people are faithful. They've been with us for all the way through the first couple seasons into season three. What do you think? Half off. What do you think? You know what? I don't think that's good enough. I think seventy percent off. <laughs> Frank loves you more than me. What can I say? 20% wow. more. You have numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is about data. Um, so we're, you know, for a limited time, if you sign up, uh, definitely uh, during the month of um, basically, why don't we say up until August 15th, it'll be 70% off. That makes sense. That I good? like it. Yeah, sounds good. Beyond that, uh, we'll make it, um, we'll go down to 50%. That sounds fair. Um, but you have access to great talent. I mean, we only talk about Reza. We have Nick Harris. Yeah. Both Nick and uh, Reza have been guests on the show. So you can go back and check they out have. their shows. We also have someone who's not yet been on a formal show, but she was on a data point. Uh, Catherine Wil Wilhelmson. I'm sorry. For yes, Wilhelmson. Wilhelmson. Yes. Good. I got her name right. Um, so yes. she's going to be talking about uh, Azure Data Factory, the what, the when, and the where, and the why. Um, because Data Factory is one of those things where I used to joke, I called it Sassafras, right? SSIS as a service. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I am seeing a lot more customers, like in, 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 uh, from the Microsoft point of view, come in and say, hey, what's this ADF stuff about? So we're going to have that. We are right. also going to have someone else who's been uh, not only a guest on these data points that we've had, but has been a roving reporter, Tim McAlilly. He'll present be presenting um although his session is as of yet i think um i think not formally announced uh in terms of what the topic yeah. is but it's probably going to be about um data warehouse yep tim's tim's awesome at data warehousing and we also have dr Layla atati also from new yep. zealand who is presenting on ai and i don't know if you recognize that you know our listeners are savvy and they keep up um, if you've been paying attention to some of the conferences that are going on around the globe, uh, a lot of these names are popping right. up there. So, you know, Dr. Dr. Atati is one, Reza, 
and they just travel all over the place, uh, although they, they live in New Zealand. And my friend and brother from another mother, uh, Nick Harris, is going to open the keynote. Um, I can share a, a couple of things about Nick. I don't think he would, he would mind. Uh, one of them is he's been uh, on the cutting edge of business leadership with technology. He's, he's one of those people who can do both. And I'm always jealous of them because I, I can I do the technology okay and the business so so. <laughs> so you know. But but Nick has really been good at both of these things. He's been a, a he's a former CIO, um, and um, he recently was accepted into the Sloan MBA program at MIT. So he's actually starting probably about the time we air his his keynote. Um, he's going to be uh, jumping into that. So he's not uh, any kind of slouch when it comes to either business or technology. And um, really excited to have him opening uh, with the opening keynote. Right. And I think if you look at our speakers um, and if you go to datasoupsummit.com, um, as I'm as we're recording this, like uh, I would say 80 percent of it is kind of up and yeah. um, uh, the, the agenda is up. Uh, we we are working with the extra uh, 20% of the agenda, which is kind of mentally how I got that extra 20% discount for y'all that that sign up <laughs> before, um, before we kind of have uh, the paint dry. But um, you know, JLD has inspired me to move forward and you know move forward with transparency. And um, you know, we we wanted to have a, a conference that kind of covered the entire swath yes. of data science and data engineering, not just from like the, here are the bits, here's what you do. But kind of like from the business point of view, like why do this? I mean, um, you know, it, in 2019, it's kind of absurd, uh, uh, maybe bordering on surrealism, that you would have any C-level uh, person in any company say that data is not por part of a por important part of our business. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think part of that might be just intimidation, because I think one of the things that, that um, is a blocker for learning for a lot of folks or doing anything is just the vulnerability you have to put yourself out there to either internally or externally say, I don't know. Right. You know, and I, I, I talk to a lot of folks that want to get into data science uh, or, 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 or AI, and they just kind of say, you know, they immediately a guard kind of comes up because they're used to being the top dog of C sharp or C plus plus or Java. And right. then they realize that they have to, everybody's a noob. Everybody's always a noob at some point. Sure. But, you know, sure. with this field, you know, I mean, if you have five years experience doing AI, I mean, you, that is a very small crowd. Right, right. So I think, you know, getting back to inspiration and tech intensity and how those two relate together. I think our I see it, you know, back to, you know, my Blues Brothers moment, you know, I'm on a mission to inspire yeah. folks um, to get, you know, into the technical aspect of it. And no matter where they are, you know. Um, there's plenty of materials with that. And speaking of yeah. which, speaking yeah, of yeah. which, right, if Andy's like webinars and training that he makes available isn't enough for you, right? Doesn't cover the kind of the basics of stats and things like that. Uh, we have, guess what, Andy? What do we have? We have our first sponsor. No way. Way, way. <laughs> so they originally came to me and said, hey, we want to sponsor the podcast and sponsor, you know, the blog. And I'm like, tell you what. I'll do one because you hit me at a good day. I had a good cup of coffee that day. Uh, they are actually also <laughs> going to be sponsors for the, the Data Soup Summit. Um, it's 365 yeah. Data Science. Awesome. And uh, we will make sure we have the link in the description. And um, in terms of, uh, you know, if you if you use that link, uh, they know that we sent you. <laughs> right, um, right. I'll also see about getting a discount there, too. Um, but um, since uh, I don't control what the discount is, I'll have to <laughs> check my notes and uh, see if I can get them a better discount, get you all a better discount because you've been an awesome listener. Uh, listening for Andy and I prattle on for, you know, two and a half, going on three years. Yeah. Yeah, this is so exciting, Frank, because these are, it's a culmination of, uh, of, you know, a lot of hard work and, you know, months of dreaming before that. Right. Uh, when you and I first started talking about this, and I want to say, gosh, it was, I know I was in the fall. It's, it's, we're coming up on, on three years ago when we actually started talking about, um, about doing this podcast. And 
one of the things we, we wanted to do and we started focusing on at the end of season one, although it wasn't public, you and I were talking behind the scenes about, OK, can we land someone on the show oh. who, you know, who, who has more recognition, who can help us? Right. Right. <laughs> so I'm just I'm going to say I'm, I'm not going to tell the story. I'm just going to say our first attempt, we failed. Well, we didn't just fail, dude. <laughs> we failed spectacularly. Um, well, OK, I, I, that's right. Well, we did. We, we really did. And I, I'll, I'll let people in. So if you've been following us on Twitter and Facebook, every now and then you'll hear Frank or I mention um, just as a byline, we'll say something about getting blocked on Twitter or not getting blocked on Twitter. Yeah, that's related. I'll just well, I think it. we also mentioned it prominently when we had Milena on the show because I had, she's somebody I knew from kind of the DC mm. Tech crowd and uh, uh, mostly on Twitter. So I invited her on the show, even right. though technically she's not quite data science, but what she does is very relevant to everyday life, but also kind of AI and stuff. But um, oh yeah, you know. And then I said, yeah, yeah, I found her on Twitter, and she's like, and Andy's like, and she didn't block you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's there's a that's the as much of the right. backstory as we're going to reveal today uh that's as that's how that went but um through uh hard work persistence uh frank was able to uh to make con a connection with uh john lee dumas and uh mr jld himself and i thought that was a spectacular segment that we had with him. It really was, because I, I wanted to kind of uh, get back to kind of like the, the core of what data-driven is, because right. um, it's changed over time. And, right. and part of it was, well, I mean, I mean, we, we do meander, right? Like, <laughs> No. <laughs> what we, it's what we do. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think the key is coming back to what was the core of it, what really inspired it. And a lot of the inspiration that I took was from uh, listening to the Grant Cardone audiobooks, uh, right. And listening to the EO Fire podcast at a time yep. when, you know, it was made pretty clear to me that I was going to get laid off, you know, ultimately. Right. And kind of like I accidentally stumbled upon that. And, and I mean, and you want to talk about a content machine. I mean, the first 2000 episodes, he recorded seven days a week. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and you know, the whole idea of people have is like, I can't do it. I, I don't have time or this, whatever. I mean, if he can do it seven days a week it's possible to do something once a week. You know what I mean? Like it's not, absolutely. It's not a stretch and um, not to go down the, a rabbit hole of like, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk's theory of time, right. <laughs> which is another guy. That's a pretty interesting guy. Um, yes. Also inspirational. Also inspirational. Um, is, is that, that idea of, uh, you know, um, um, totally blanked out. No, it's the idea that, you know, everybody has the same amount, number of hours a day. It's just a question of how you spend right. that time. And, um, right, absolutely. That is, uh, and, and then that's something I really took to heart starting in, like, I guess it would have been 2016, you know, like, um, yeah. so here I am, you know, 50, 40 some odd, pushing 50 some odd certifications uh, later, you know, and I have a, you know, well, during that period of time, I either had a job or didn't, depending on when you come back. But I've always had the kids. I've always had the dogs. I've always had the wife, the house, and things like that. Like, it is possible. You just have to kind of find your way to make it happen. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, part of this is um, is is having people that we're, you know, that inspire us. And we mentioned this. I don't think we mentioned it on the air, but maybe we did at the very beginning of the last show or the last segment we recorded, rather, um, is that now you and I have both had this experience uh, multiple times where people come up to us when they see us at a conference or at an event, and they say, you know, hey, the data-driven right. guy, you know, and then depending on which one they're, of us they're talking to, they'll say, say hi to, you know, Frank or Andy for me. And it's just, it just boggles my mind. And, and we look at the, the download numbers. I'm still... Uh, Frank, you know, we cracked right. a thousand. Um, not only that, we cracked 80,000. Right, I know. And it's like, I think uh, as of this away. morning, we're just over 87,000. And I still remember the day, wow. like, we cracked 9,000. Wow. And I'm, like, doing a whole run around, doing a whole Dragon Ball thing, Dragon Ball Z thing, going, over 9,000. <laughs> <laughs> Might be on the Facebook page. I'm not sure if I lost <laughs> post going. We need to highlight that go. video. There you go. We, and uh, speaking of Facebook, so we yeah. do a lot of these data points, which are recorded live. 
totally unscripted. Those things are unscripted. Um, and then what you hear on the podcast feed is an edited down version of that. But if you ever want to see the thing, bloopers and all, right. um, they're on our Facebook page. So that, that alone, I think, just the comedic value sometimes um, of that <laughs> is worth it. I still I still I still the love Donuts which one, was yeah, it at yeah. the Dunkin Donuts where yeah. you were you were with you had your kids with you <laughs> that that's classic <laughs> so if you don't know the whole background story but uh the idea for data driven the name um came from um um uh, I was at a Dunkin Donuts and I kind of had this idea of you know DD I saw DD on the door which unfortunately they've changed the door handle since then um, Darn it. but, um, so I wanted to record cause it was some milestone might've been a 9,000 milestone. Uh, but I had my I kids with was. me and, you know, bribing them with donuts is, you know, that's any parent out there knows how that works. Unfortunately, what I didn't <laughs> consider was telling them about donuts before I hit record, because if you go to the un, un, unedited one, they're basically, all they're doing is they're talking about, can we go get the donuts now? I'm like, guys, am I done recording? <laughs> Yeah, but I want the donut. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. That was funny. And it's been a number of like flubs and stuff like that. And um, um, it's been, it's been an interesting ride. That's for sure. So I just wanted to thank everyone. Seriously. You know, yes. you, not only, I think we, our goal isn't to be, I think our goal was, was to inspire, but I think the thing that surprised me, I don't want to speak for Andy, was we've been inspired by you all. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah I, I'm right there with you. I, I had uh, had no idea that there were that many people out there that were even doing some of the stuff that Frank and I were talking about, uh, both business and personal. And um, it was just, it, it, I think inspiring is the right word. And the, you know, the feedback that we get uh, for, from the show is mostly positive. And I, you know, when I say mostly, I mean, way, way north of 95, 98 percent. Is positive, and the stuff that isn't positive is usually very constructive. Right. So, it, it and again, all of it, all of it is just very inspiring to us. People are listening, they're hearing stuff. Uh, a small minority are hearing stuff and going, you know, you could do that better if you did this, which is awesome. Keep that up. But just yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah. We love that. We love the feedback we get. Uh, we um, really enjoy the feedback we get, actually. You know, some of the things that have come up have been like, oh, yeah, that's true. So, yeah, so so thank you. So, you know, um, thank you for two and a half wonderful yeah. years. We're kicking off season three. We're going to come out with the, this and the data summits, data, uh, data soup summits. And um, don't worry, we got plenty of content coming up. Absolutely. And, um, Looking forward to seeing what the, the next uh, three seasons bring. Um, if you <laughs> caught the, uh, hopefully we won't disappoint in season eight, <laughs> like another prominent show did, uh, which I love the Game of Thrones um, theme thing you did. That was fun. Thanks, Frank. I never watched a single episode of that, and I think I have like the first five books on my Kindle. Never read any of them, but. I know it was popular, and it's nothing against it. I didn't watch. I I didn't not watch it. I don't know how to say that. I it, I wasn't driven away by anything in the show. I just don't have time. <laughs> so people right, were it's talking a matter about. Of, they're like, "How awesome this show is!" And I was like, "I can't. I just I just can't." <laughs> right, right. So what I did was I waited till season five, and then I kind of binged. Ah, season okay. five when I had like three months of HBO for some reason oh. um, and then I kind of caught up again when we switched to another cable providers again and gotcha you know and then uh, I saw the first two episodes of season eight and then was kind of advised yeah maybe you don't waste your time with the rest of it and I, I kind of caught highlight reels uh, yeah um, you know I heard really disappointing I heard disappointment is probably the best way to say I it. think it was just they were the, the people who make the show were done I mean, the 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 show runners had yeah. gotten a deal with Star Wars. And, oh, cool! You know, the funny thing was like they stuff would get like there was a Starbucks cup from one of the characters, like on it's set in kind of a medieval world, and there was like this Starbucks cup like right in the middle of like table. I may not have been Starbucks, but it was like Tim Hortons or something like that. Or, oh my goodness! Because um, they film, I don't know if they film in Canada, Iceland. They film in a lot of 
interesting places, Ireland, Iceland, sure. stuff like that. So whoever the, the local coffee chain was, that's who it was. Which is funny. <laughs> Attention to detail. That's the first sign. Once you lose that, that's the first sign. Yeah. You're focusing on something different. That's this for sure. true. So speaking of focus or the lack thereof, which is kind yes. of what we do, uh, we will let the nice British lady end the show. Thanks for listening to Data Driven. Don't just listen, become a data driver by going to datadriven.tv to sign up to join the community, access to special events, tips and tricks, and more. Sign up today at datadriven.tv.